So trig curves are used, as I've said, in lots of ways. One another way that they are used is in um, sound waves. So on your radios, I know lots of people don't listen to the radio, but in your car, if you've got a car, it has two sorts of channels. It has an AM channel and an FM channel. And those are actually amplitude modula modulation and frequency modulation. So they actually come from what the actual what wave, the sound wave looks like. So an amplitude one would mean that we're looking at the height of the wave. Now the height of the wave, because of the way sound waves are collected at the other end, it's not as pure as a frequency modulation. And a frequency modulation varies the amount of waves within a certain time frame. All right? So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So it occurs... Here, in front of X. Now, seems silly to think that you need to have that bracket around that, but remember that in bed mass, this is a function, and it will do its functioning to whatever follows it. All right? So it will only sign B. It won't sign B times X. It will do sign B, and then it will multiply it by X. So at this particular point, we've got to get used to writing in lots of brackets. And there's lots of things this year where brackets are really, really important. Do not leave them out. So quite often I will be saying bracket, 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 bracket. I mean bracket, 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 bracket. There are that many of them to actually make things work. Okay, so at the start, when we've just got B, this is where it'll appear. So if we were looking at a normal, a long equation, we would have A sine B, X, plus D. Those are all the things we know about at the moment. We are going to get to C as well, but for now, that's where we're going. So what it does is it, as I said, it is going to affect how many waves there are in the space. So what we say is that the frequency... is the how many um, graphs, graphs in the space of the usual one. All right? So along with frequency, we get something called period. And the period is the length of the graph. So the usual one graph is called the period of the graph, from the start to when it repeats. Okay? So if we've got... Y equals sine 2x. That 2 is the frequency. Now we can find the period without drawing the graph because there's a formula. The formula says period equals 2 pi divided by frequency, which also means frequency equals two pi divided by the period. Two pi is our normal period of a, of a sine graph. Starts at zero, goes to one, to one pi, comes to two pi, all right? So that's why two pi and we use these formulas as our working to show what we're finding. So in this case, B equal 2, so the period would equal 2 pi over 2, or pi. Now that's quite helpful when we're sketching our graph, which is what we're going to start by doing. So when we're sketching our graph, we're going between, there's no A, so 1 and negative 1, or D for that sake. Our normal graph would look like this. 
All right? That's our normal sign grief. We've got twice as many in that period. Or the period, so the whole thing happens in a pi, from zero to pi. So you can think of it either way, you're going to get it right. So we move from here to here, and so we're going to have two in this space. Like that. That's a pretty good graph, actually. I must say so myself. All right? So we've got two sign graphs where we had one. That's what the frequency does for us. Now, we don't stop there, so we could be keeping going because we could have been interested in from negative pi to 2 pi, or we could have been interested in from 0 to 2 pi to, or to 4 pi. And when we're doing the assessment, it won't be pi at all because you don't measure things in pies. So this will be 6.28. This will be 3.14, all right? So we will be talking in terms of hours. We'll probably be one hour, two hours, three hours, just before pi, four hours, five hours, six hours, 0.28 before two pi. And that will be what we're discussing when we actually put it into a practical sense, which we are going to get to shortly. All right, so that's how it works. If it's a wrapped up one, so we might have y equals negative 3 cosine a half x minus 1. Now we've got a, b, c, and d, and we need to find all of them. All right? a, b, and d, sorry. a equals negative 3. All right? b equals a half, so period, that's a period. Right half equals 2 pi divided by a half equals 4 pi, and d equals negative 1. So we approach this slowly, do one piece at a time. We're talking about a cosine graph. All right, so. I made it nice and big this time so we can see the whole lot. All right, 4 to negative 4, 2 pi, and 4 pi. So my original graph would have looked like this. Okay, and over here as well. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make it negative 3 times bigger. So now I've gone to negative 3 and 3. Still isn't moving past. Alright, that's good. Okay, next part. I'm going to do D next because it's easier. So a half as much in the pit. So I want to have only a half a graph in here. So I need to go up and down. All right, it's my half a graph, okay? So it's, this is, remember, two periods. So the half a graph is here, all right? Half the graph times two because I wanted to see the whole thing. Got one last thing to do, and that is minus one. So move that red graph all down one. Okay, so my actual graph looks like that. All right, so one piece at a time. The importance in drawing the graph, you can actually do the assessment without drawing the graph. It is possible, but the graph is part of your actual evidence, and it does tell you where your answers are going to be, so whether you're right or not. If you don't draw one, you believe your calculator, you put something in wrong. Yes, it seems believable. It's all wrong. You fail. All right? Draw every piece of evidence that you can to show where you're going. All right? You're allowed to get one thing out of A, B, C, and D wrong. 
and still pass the assessment. You just can't get any more than achieved. Okay?